Hello everyone, I am finally getting around to finishing up some of my unfinished projects, so I thought I would go over some of my binding methods that I do. There are different ways to do joins and stuff. So with this one we're going to start, I always just make sure that I do my join on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter which side. For the first method that I do use sometimes for my joins is I will make sure that I cut off the salvages off of my binding just so that we have a nice clean edge over there. And now we need to open this up. I've already made the binding and ironed it in half. But we need to fold this corner over so it makes like a triangle or a point shape. This is just so that we can tuck it in later on and we won't have any raw edges. Um, well, it'll all make sense once we get to that point. But you just need to make sure it's like that. And I just iron it so that it stays in place and that works very well for me. I'm just making sure that all of my lines are straight and that they're flush. And then we can fold it back in half and then we're just going to place it onto the top side of your quilt. I personally prefer to sew it onto the top side, but some people do sew it to the back side and then flip it over. So this is just when we get around to the edge, we can just tuck that other loose end in there and we will have no raw edges visible. So we are ready to start sewing this down. I like to leave my joints so that they are in the middle of whichever side I'm working on. It just makes it easier later on when you're trying to do the joints because it can get a little bit finicky sometimes. So I'm going to take a clip and I'm going to clip it on here so that it's just holding that point down. And then I'm going to open my binding back up. And then I'm just going to place another clip there to hold that one side down because the first section of this binding we need to sew with just one layer of the binding. It'll all make sense when we get here. So once we get to the sewing machine I'm going to make sure that I open up my binding so that I am only sewing onto one layer and then I'm just going to sew about five or six inches down and then we'll fold it back over on top of itself. Like I said it all makes sense as you watch me do this. This method is kind of perfect for beginners and this is how I used to do all the joins on my quilts before I learned how to do it the other ways. So like I said, I'm just going to be sewing a quarter inch from the edge and I'm just going to go about five or six inches down. You can do a little back stitch here if you want to, but because I'm going to be lifting this up and sewing over that exact same spot again, I didn't bother with that. But once we have uh, sewn that one side down, we're just going to fold our binding back the way we normally would. But here you can see what it looks like and I'm just going to fold this back down. And then I'm going to start sewing about where I stopped because we need to have a little bit of an opening there so that we can tuck the other end in. So I'm just going to find where I stopped sewing and I'm just going to place it back under the needle and I'm just going to finish sewing all the way to the edge there. And then I'm just going to make sure that all of my layers are flush and that they're lining up properly and then I will sew a quarter, and quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm not going to sew all the way off of the quilt when I get to my corner. You could mark it here if you wanted to but I just kind of eyeball it. Once I have about a quarter of an inch left to go, I will raise my foot and then I will just pivot and then I will sew at an angle off of that corner there. This is just because we want the mitered corners and we want them to look nice and neat and lay flatter. But here you can see what that starting point looks like and this is just going to be perfect for later on when we tuck it in. I just popped a clip in there just to hold it down. So now to do the mitered corner, you're going to lift your binding up so that it is straight and you have a nice straight line over here and the edge of your binding is lining up straight with the edge of your quilt and then just fold it back down on top of itself like this. I just like to use my finger to hold that little part down. It just makes it a little bit easier and then once I have everything lined up I will put some pin clips in there or pins if you wanted to. But this is what it should look like. You should have that fold there and this should be straight edge and then this should all be flush around the corner and along the side. So I'll just pop some clips on there to hold it in place and then head back over to the sewing machine and then sew with a quarter of an inch. And here too, I'm just going to start at the edge and go all the way down and I will repeat the same process with all of my other corners. And then when we come around our last corner, we are just going to sew a little bit. I do about one or two inches. I prefer to leave myself extra long tails when I'm doing my binding just because it makes everything a lot easier. But I am on the last side here, so I just sewed about two, two and a half inches. And then here I did backstitch just to make sure that everything would stay in place. All right, I have it all sewn on and as you can see, I have lots of extra binding, but I just used the rest of this fabric to make binding because I liked it and I was using it for a lot of projects. So now we need to cut this piece and we don't want to cut it too short. I mean, I'm going to cut it at an angle because I find like it sits in there a little bit nicer if I do that. You could just cut it straight, but because you have that other piece folded, you're going to have one section here that's shorter. So you want to make sure that you are cutting at least an inch past that shortest section. Otherwise, you might end up cutting it too short. So if you're unsure, cut it longer and if you need to trim it down. And then all you need to do is just tuck it in there. This method is one of the easiest, I think. And I use this for a lot of my wall quilts because it's not going to get washed a lot. 
So I'm a little bit more okay with it. If I am doing it for a quilt that I know is going to be in the washer a lot, I prefer to sew it just because I feel like that would be a little bit more secure. But once you have it tucked in there, just line everything up and then just go sew the rest of that section with a quarter inch seam and then it's all done. And here you can see what it looks like and I'm just going to fold it over. I do feel like it's a little bit bulkier if I do it this method, but it still works and you can see it. there is an opening there and you could hand stitch that close if you wanted to. And if I was doing it for a quilt that was being washed on a regular basis, I probably would, but these wall quilts don't get laundered that much, so then I'm not going to stress about it. Moving on to method two, and this is the second easiest version if you ask me. This is a little book that I made for myself the other day. If you haven't watched that video already, I will leave a link to that in the description box below if you are interested. So here too, I'm going to start with by laying my binding nice and flat, and I'm just going to find the approximate center point of my project and just cut a straight line, just making sure that I'm cutting it straight and not crooked because well, we want it straight. I'm going to lay the other half of my binding on top, and this is where I'm going to make sure that I am overlapping the top binding a quarter of an inch. And if you need to, just stop and readjust and try again because you want to make sure that this is exactly a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just going to take a heat erase pen here and draw my line. You could use whatever you wanted for a marking tool. This is just what I had on hand. And I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut that. You could use your rotary cutter and a ruler if you wanted to. And I do very often double check because once the cut is made, the cut is made. And if you cut too short, well, there's no going back. But now we're just going to open these two up and we're just going to lay them right sides together. So that's all I do is I just open both up and then I pull them up at the same time. And now we're just going to line up these straight edges here and I'm just going to try to make sure that I'm getting them lined up perfectly. And when you have a smaller project like this, it can get a little bit difficult because it feels like you don't have a whole lot of space. So what I like to do is before I even go to the sewing machine is I like to fold it in half and pop a clip on there and I feel like, feel like this makes it a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch seam. Then once I have sewn it, I'm just going to open this all up and I'm just going to finger press this here. I'm not going to bother going to the iron and giving it a good press there. This is more than sufficient. So like I said, I'll just finger press it and use my nails to kind of smush it all into place. And then we can fold it back in and make sure that that inside seam is folded open. By pressing that open, we are just reducing bulk and making things a little bit easier later on. Now I'm just going to make sure that my binding is nice and flush with the edge of my little book here. And you just want to do the same thing if you're doing a quilt and then sew with a quarter inch of a quarter inch seam. <laughs> Apparently I can't talk today. And just finish up that little section that hasn't been done. But that's what it looks like with a straight join and I think that still looks great and this method is perfect for when you're doing smaller projects. I feel like it's a little bit easier to do the straight join than it is to do the 45 degree but I will go over that one next. And please hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying this video. So for the last one I am just going to make sure that I leave myself a nice long tail and start at the end of my quilt and the same method here for my corners. Sew a quarter inch from the edge and then just fold up and over like I went over in the previous section of this video on how to do the corners. And we're just going to sew all the way around and once we get to the other end, again we're going to leave a nice long tail by just sewing a few inches down to the top of the quilt. Once I have this laying here you can see now what I mean by long tails. And here again I apparently made extra binding. My math was horrible on this one. But again I'm just going to take the one tail, lay it out nice and flat and making sure that it's all nice and smooth. And then find the approximate center point and lift your binding. Make sure that you don't accidentally cut into your quilt because that would just be horrendous if you cut into the quilt right now. But yeah, I just cut about it at the halfway point. It's up to you. And this piece that I cut off, I'm actually going to use this to do the measuring for my next section. So I'm just going to open it up. And this measures two and a half inches wide. That is what I cut my binding at. So that is what I need my overlap to be here. So I'm just going to take this next piece and just lay it on top, making sure that everything's nice and flush. You don't want to pull on it too much because then you will end up cutting it too short. But you do want to make sure that everything's nice and smooth because you don't want the binding to end up being too long. So now I'm just going to cut it so that it is flush with that little marker piece that I'm using there. Now my binding overlaps at two and a half inches and that is exactly what we need. So this one, it takes a little bit of practice and it's easy to get things twisted. But what I do is I just open it up. And then I twist it down like this. Basically just watch because I'm not sure if I can explain this. And then I open this side up and I just pull it over like this. And I'm just going to line up my corners here to make that nice and square. And we're going to be sewing a diagonal line on this. And I do want to pin it for that. So I'm just going to line everything up as good as I can. 
And then I'm just going to use a clip to hold the one corner down. And this way I can just kind of work on the other side and not worry about anything. And then just pop my pins in. That way I can sew my diagonal line without removing my pins and I don't have to worry about anything shifting and, and moving somewhere where I don't want it while I'm sewing. So I just place two pins in there. That way it's going to hold everything in place and I don't need to move them until after I'm done sewing. But just make sure that your corners are matched up and that they are not shifted. Now we need to sew a diagonal line there, but we need to do it from outside corner to outside corner. That one section makes a little V. You want to make sure that you're not sewing into that. But here again, I'm just going to fold my quilt up and then clip it in place. That way it's out of my way and it makes it a little bit easier. I normally don't draw a line, but I will in this time just to show you exactly how you need to be doing this. And that is where you need to sew. So you want to sew just along that line or a thread's width beside it. I just sew right along that line. Once I have sewn it, I will remove my pins, but before I cut anything, I am going to double check that I did not get my binding in a twist because trust me, I've done that before. And you just want to make sure that everything's laying nice and flat. And if it is, then you can go ahead and cut this little corner off here. You can use your rotary cutter or a scissor. I'm just going to use a scissor and cut an approximate quarter inch. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate. And here again, I'm just going to use my fingers and press this open and give it a good little finger press. And then I'm just going to make sure that that seam stays pressed open and I'm just going to do it again, line everything up and adjust it, pop a clip in there and then sew with a quarter inch seam to finish off that section. And that is what this join looks like and I think that they all work great and I hand stitch all of my binding down. I don't like machine stitching because it never looks nice when I do it. But this is what it looks like, it's all hand stitched down. You can see there's a little bit of an opening there but like I said with the wall quilt it's not going to get washed that much, it's not a big deal. I was doing this on a quilt that was being used, I would stitch that shut. And for my backing fabric for wall quilts, I just use whatever I have on hand. If it's for myself, if I'm doing it for a gift, then I would make sure that I match my backing fabric. But here I just did whatever I had on hand. But I really like the way these joins all look and let me know in the comment section which one you prefer and which method you use. But that is three different ways to join the binding on your quilts or your quilty projects. And I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by and until next time.